Uh, Microsoft's quote unquote power of the cloud seems more possible than ever in their upcoming quote unquote most powerful console ever. How do you see them best leveraging, leveraging that technology? GeForce now can run, run on an app. Um, I'm going to go to you on this one, Oliver, since you're fully into AI <laughs> and by extension the cloud. Yeah. Well, I think the, the what do you think about this? The pitch, if you go back to that May 2022 document for the next gen Xbox console, was like cohesive cloud compute or hybrid cloud compute, which implies yep. that you're not necessarily running everything in the cloud, but you're using a mixture of local hardware and cloud hardware to accelerate certain workloads. Use a mixture of hardware as as appropriate, which I think takes a lot of the kind of traditional cloud gaming scenarios that you would have seen Google pitch with Google Stadia, like doing, you know, instant game trials or various real-time spectator modes or various Twitch integrations, things like this. That makes that less possible, although I have to imagine that they probably will have an Xbox console a platform in the in the cloud exclusively with the, with those consoles as well. But I tend to think that a lot of that pitch does involve things that are AI related, that are very memory heavy and latency insensitive. So stuff like AI dialogue generation, voice synthesis, AI driven asset work, stuff like that, that could be uh, applied in real time um, or, or in semi real time, but doesn't need to be generated like within uh, 30 milliseconds, <laughs> you know, it can take a little bit longer. So that would be my suspicion. And the nature of a lot of AI workloads at the moment um, is that they tend to be very memory hungry which a console is obviously not going to have a ton of. So for those memory heavy operations, you would really want to rely on the cloud. Maybe you could run some stuff locally that's a little bit leaner, but but for memory heavy stuff, you would want to rely on the cloud. Mm -hmm. John? Uh, don't really have much to add to that. It's, I When I talk, you, you know, it's not my favorite subject. <laughs> I think what's being discussed here isn't the concept of no, like, know, GeForce Now. It's more the idea of uh, combining local and cloud compute to produce something genuinely different. Uh, and I think the I, issue there is, uh, from my perspective, I don't see how this strategy can merge with the handheld strategy that they're talking about. Because the whole point of a handheld is that you know, it's mobile, you take it with you. You're not going to be connecting uh, your handheld Xbox to the cloud, you know, via your phone or whatever. It's unlikely to have a 5G modem. And even if it did, what's the chances that you could actually get reliable right. connection to the cloud? They so wouldn't be this... stupid enough to release a PlayStation Portal equivalent. <laughs> well, you oh, know, it's, it's, it's different, right? It's, the, I think what's being talked about here is the, the concept of uh, remote compute being, you know, augmenting your local compute to produce this <sighs> glorious thing. That that was the pitch that was made for Xbox One. You know, it was kind of like, I think it was a reaction to the fact that the PlayStation 4 had much better GPU at the time. It's like, hey, well, hold on a second. We've got all this amazing stuff happening in the cloud. And that seems to be a sort of redux of that. But we are in a rather exciting AI age. I just don't see how you can have, on the one hand, a handheld machine that's designed to be used, you know, anywhere, and then you know this concept of this uh, homogenous compute entity that's working both locally and in the cloud to produce this brand new generation of games. There's still that bit of an issue there. So uh, in terms of how that technology is going to be leveraged, I don't, I don't know. I, I just I mean, can't see it working on a handheld unless you're at home with a high bandwidth connection. I think realistically, it can. It's something that can work for specific game concepts. This is not like a large scale thing that you're going to be using across everything. I think that doesn't right. make much sense. Mm -hmm. But I think there are game concepts p potentially. It's been tough to actually figure that out. Where perhaps they could leverage this. You know, it's it's no big deal to have uh, an MMO or like a game like Diablo or something that's always online now, even though yeah. maybe Diablo shouldn't be. But Or, or you know, they, something like Helldivers. It's, it's they, maybe exactly. unlikely like, to be taking out. It would just be a case of like, okay, this is an online game uh, and we're using the cloud for something. Whether that's compelling enough to the audience, that's, that's still kind of up in the air, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but they need to find a compelling use case for it to make it actually worth doing. And I don't think we've actually seen any shipping products really do that. No. Yeah. So I also think that just kind of 
thinking about all the things we've discussed today <laughs> and bringing it all together, I think we do have some conflicts here, right? We have the handheld yep. in one corner, which is a low power console uh, that presumably is going to be the baseline for a lot of these titles. Then we have Microsoft saying we're going to do the most powerful console ever, which sounds like maybe at this point <laughs> is just a reskinned PC of some variety, right? That's their next gen system. And then we also, going back to May of 2022, we have this cohesive cloud compute console that it could be ARM, it could be x86, it could be a lot of things. It's very custom. It's a more traditional console design. So I would suggest that the more plausible thing is that this cohesive cloud compute hybrid console has been abandoned at some stage. And now the focus is on this new handheld. The focus is on bringing Xbox and Windows together in some sense and making that vision work potentially with a very wide range of scaling, maybe keeping similar CPUs, but very wide range of scaling on the GPU between those different systems. I think that looks like a more plausible route forward than this cohesive cloud compute thing. Cause you're right, Rich, it just does not work at all with this uh, nope. with this handheld concept, right? It just does not work. Right. I mean, it could. I think it may well be the case that it could be deployed on certain games that yeah. are reliant on a network connection. That kind of makes sense, but it's not going to be, you know, as was kind of hinted back in the day that okay, your graphics are suddenly going to get a lot better because you've got this compute that's available remotely. <laughs> uh, the, the counterpoint I would say is that. Um, the amount of money that Microsoft is investing now in AI compute, there's going to be somebody at Microsoft saying, why aren't we using this for gaming? What could it do? You know, it could be a game changer and it possibly could. So there is that sort of, you know, which is maybe one of the reasons why we had the whole power of the cloud concept thrust upon us back well, in the day, even though it never actually led to Yeah, when, when Mr. Businessman is like, let's use, the, let's leverage this thing to make games rather than the game developers, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's problematic.